Good afternoon all. Today I'm going to take a closer look at uh, this thing which I got on eBay. This was uh, opened in my post bag 67 and uh, it's an inverter. It's a 12 volt DC in on this side to uh, 220 volt AC out although it doesn't quite seem to be able to manage 220 volts AC but we'll come to that when I put the DVM on it. Um, it was relatively cheap. It's a fairly simple thing. It's a Royer oscillator consisting of a transformer, uh, a resonant capacitor which makes up a tank circuit evidently, two power transistors with a couple of bias resistors and a choke and that's it. The device here which I originally thought was a MOV may well be a capacitor. I can't quite understand what it's doing and there's a bridge rectifier there which is also a bit of a oddity. Now I should just mention that today's desktop surface is carbon fiber. It's a strange uh, composite carbon fiber sort of embedded in a plastic substrate. Um, so it's a bit shiny and it is reflecting the camera a little bit but we'll see how it goes. So here's the Wikipedia article on the Royer oscillator. It's an electronic relaxation oscillator that employs a saturable, uh, a saturable core transformer. Okay that's fine. Now this diagram here isn't quite like the circuit uh, that's on the board but further down there's what's called the resonant Royer and it says note the addition of the capacitor. The capacitor is across here directly across the primary of the transformer and that capacitor is the yellow X2 capacitor on the board. Two power transistors, two uh, pull up resistors while well, pulling up to VCC. There's the choke which is on the board. Uh, so this is identical pretty much to the thing that I bought on eBay. So I've printed that uh, Wikipedia page out. Here's the diagram with the circuit and I will add on to this, I'll cut this out, and I'll add on to this the components that are on my board which seem to be uh, in addition to this Royer or this resonant Royer oscillator. So the additional components on my circuit board are this blue thing which at first I thought was a MOV but now I'm pretty sure it's a capacitor. It's got 222 written on it. So that's in one of the output arms of the uh, secondary of the transformer, the high voltage side of the transformer. Uh, and then also there's this bridge rectifier, which again is on the output of this circuit. So it turns uh, low voltage DC into high voltage AC and then rectifies it to turn it into high voltage DC. Not quite sure why, but that's really handy for the application that I want to use this for. So this board has a number of uh, lettered output points. There's D, um, there's, what's that say? Oh, that's the input. That's D, C, B and A there. So I've added those onto my drawing. Now I've also shorted out this capacitor because I can't really see the point of it being in series with the uh, AC output. And I'm going to put a, a DVM on, uh, on AC volts, of course, on A and B, so that we can just see the direct output from this transformer. But also points, well, this point before the capacitor goes into the bridge rectifier, and then the positive goes to point C, and the negative goes to point D. So these will be my DC output, when I get round to using the uh, bridge rectifier, which is there. Um, but let's just look at the way this generates from a DC input, that's between this VCC point and ground, generates an AC output. And because it's a resonant circuit, we've got the capacitor and the inductor, it's quite sine wave-like. So um, one of the issues with that, of course, is that these transistors are, spend a lot of time in their sort of uh, semiconducting region and therefore they do get quite hot. So here's my initial setup. I've got uh, 12 volts DC coming in here. Actually it's about 13 and a half because it's sunny. Um, I've set this for, well I'll set that for 12 volts and um, I don't think we'll need much current because there's no load on this and then we'll just have a look at what's happening on the uh, voltmeter in terms of AC volts. Now I just wanted to show the underside of this there's my shorting wire across that capacitor which routes the uh, AC which you can see with a squiggle out to this output connection and then the other AC output is, is on there. 
So this is directly measuring the uh, secondary of the transformer. So let's put this up to 12 volts. Uh, let's make it exactly 12, just so that we can see what happens. And uh, what's the current set to? That's set to quite a lot of amps. It doesn't need to be that high. So let's set it to half an amp. Oh, this takes quite a while, doesn't it? I'm not sure about this carbon fiber desktop background. I think I might have to think again on that. It's all a bit high contrast, isn't it? OK, let's switch on. So 12 volts in and all we're getting out is 160 well, 170 volts RMS. I assume this is RMS. That's moving around a little bit. That's reasonably stable. 170 volts AC. Now, can we get the 220 by raising this up? I can't raise this up much because my incoming is only 13, but I can go to 13. So about 13 and a half. In fact, it's only putting out 12.8. And I'm only getting 170 volts AC out. Oh, that suddenly jumped up. That's strange. Not sure why that is. 187. But it's not the 220 that this thing is meant to put out. So uh, already this is not quite behaving as advertised. Now, what I'm interested in, uh, firstly, is how low can the voltage on the input of this circuit go until it stops operating? Uh, so that's why my... Uh, power supply was set to a lower voltage. So let's bring that down. Is it coming down? Yeah, that is coming down. So at about 10 volts, 136 out, let's come down to 5 volts. About 5 volts, we're getting 67 uh, volts AC out. Let's come down a bit. Let's come down to 4 or 4 point something because I'm going to, or I'm planning to use this on a lithium cell. So a fully charged lithium cell, in fact, we could actually go up to 4.2 volts to see what that'll give. That'll give about 54 volts AC out, a little bit more than that. Uh, let's come down to the sort of minimum a lithium cell would have, which is about 3 volts or thereabouts. We're still getting uh, 37 volts out. And now let's just see where it packs up. And I don't think it actually does, if I remember rightly. I mean, there's 0.67 volts going in. We're still getting not much AC voltage out. Eight. Let's go to one volt going in. Oops, that switched it off. So one volt going in, and we're still getting uh, 3.6 volts coming out. Is that correct? Yes. So this thing seems to work down to pretty much any voltage. There's no lower limit. For this circuit and that's very good because I'm going to be operating it in the range between about three volts which is there with about 40 volts coming out and about four volts with about 50 volts coming out and that's almost perfect for, for what I want. Um, this output will be re rectified with that bridge rectifier which is conveniently on the board and then fed across my lithium battery pack. OK, now what I want to do is to load this output slightly to see how that affects uh, the input voltage and current. At the moment, the current is tiny. It's just uh, 17 milliamps. So what I've done is I've rigged up this set of three bulbs. These are 12 volt bulbs. So um, nominally, this is 36 volts. Now, of course, it's going to be able to take quite a bit more than that. Uh, I've just put little loops in the wires on the ends here, if you can see that against my rather wacky background, a bit tricky. And I've just twisted the wires together because these wires will not solder. So what I want to do is turn this thing off and then attach the ends of this bulb array to the outside uh, connections on the AC output, switch on and see what happens. And nothing happens. We've got no volts coming out and we've gone into constant current and the current is um, 500 milliamps, which is what I set my limit to. So I'm going to have to raise that current limit. Let's go up to an amp. There's one amp. We've still got barely anything coming out. 
So we've got one amp going in and the lamps haven't lit. So let's go up a bit further. And the lamps have come on and you may be able to hear a squealing sound. 1.3 amps. I've only got 15 volts out. Let's keep going until, uh, what's the voltage? 2.9 volts. So it's limiting the voltage to something very low at quite a significant current. So let's keep going on here. So that's 1.5. We've now got 19 volts AC out. Uh, 3.2 volts going in. Let's take the current even further. So 1.8 amps. We've now got 25 volts AC coming out. The lamps are a little bit brighter, but I mean, nominally this is 36 volts of lamps. So I can go a lot further. The only thing is, I'm not sure how hot these transistors are getting. So we now got um, two amps. It's gone off the, um, oh, it's come back onto constant current. It was on constant voltage, now it's on constant current. And things are changing. The voltage is drifting down. 3.93, 3.92. This voltage is drifting up. And I think what's happening is the transistors are getting hot. So let's switch that off. Oh yes, they're very, very hot. I mean, probably within their operational temperature range, but I can't keep my finger on there for very long. That's pretty hot. So what did we get to? We got to uh, four volts, which is really quite perfect because that's about where my lithium cell is going to be when it's starting to get uh, full of volts, as it were, and about two amps. Okay. Now, this unit uh, on the eBay listing was rated for 35 watt operation. Well, if I've got um, two amps going in and about four volts, well, that's only eight watts on the input. So it's well below what it is notionally rated at. I don't think it would run at 35 watts, quite honestly. These lamps on the output, uh, well, we've gotten sort of in the ballpark of 36 volts on the output. Uh, these are only one watt lamps. So there's only three watts actually being burnt there. So uh, the numbers don't really quite tie up. So it certainly works, but the transistors do get very hot. And that's actually what's causing the voltage to... No, is that voltage? Yeah, that's voltage. Uh, I think I set that limited to 4 volts. So it's, at the moment, voltage limited. This is creeping up. And I think the voltage will creep down, or it'll go into current limit. But what's happening is the circuit conditions are changing because the semiconductors are getting hot and that's just sort of changing everything. Well, I don't think this is going to be a major problem that's gone into constant current now. The voltage is, the input voltage is dropping off in order that the current doesn't go over 2 amps. I don't think this is a major issue because the idea of this is to remove uh, power from one cell in a series pack and transfer it through the bridge rectifier across the entire pack now that's only going to be done in sort of bursts, uh, so the uh, the idea that it gets hot with continuous use I don't think is a major issue. Okay, let's now turn to the oscilloscope. I put my uh, probe on the output, put it on times 10 because I don't want to blow up my input circuitry. can't see a thing on this screen, so I'm going to bring the camera down. And we have a pretty nice uh, sine wave on the scope. There's some information here. The frequency of oscillation is around... 40 kilohertz. The amplitude is 234 uh, volts. Is that on times 10? Yeah, coupling AC probe is times 10. So yes, that does look a uh, correct measure. So uh, let's now try putting the load back on the output, which is those little light bulbs. Uh, so switch off the 4 volt output and stick the light bulbs on the output of this. Now, of course, I'm going to have to um, make sure I've got a much higher current limit. So I'm going to put that back up to 2 amps. Beyond that, the transistors get so hot that I don't really want to uh, leave it for too long. So 2 amps, 4 volts. OK, if I switch on, those bulbs should come on. They do. Let's take a look at the waveform on the scope. And it's gone a bit strange. Um, the frequency is shot right down to, what's that reading, 7 kilohertz now. Well, that's not surprising because there's no fixed clock 
in the Royer oscillator circuit. It's all just LC. Um, but under load, we've got nothing like a sine wave now. And uh, the frequency has dropped markedly. My output amplitude, it says, is 34 volts. Uh, I'd be surprised because my DVM was measuring less than that. But uh, yeah, that shape has completely gone off now. Nevertheless, it does work. I am able to take 4 volts from a lithium cell, admittedly at a fairly high current, 2 amps, and produce uh, an output which I can force into all the lithium cells in the pack with transformer coupled, so there's no connection between input and output. Uh, when I do the lithium thing, of course, I'll be putting in my 4 volts from the cell that I'm interested in across VCC and ground, and the output will be, as I say, completely transformer isolated, rectified to produce DC. The positive side of that will go to the most positive cell in the pack, or the most positive uh, side of the cell in the pack. The negative will go to the, f the other far end, uh, and there is a complete disconnect between the two. And I like the price of this thing, um, just $2.88 free shipping. Um, mine came, I think, from eGoTo, so there will be one of these per lithium cell. So in a three cell pack, you'd need three of these, but that's just a very low price. For this module, I mean, difficult to obtain components, the choke and the transformer, it's a, it's a good price. So yes, I'm really liking this uh, little resonant Royer circuit. Uh, as my lithium power transfer from cell to pack. Um, it's cheap, it's very low tech. Okay, the frequency varies, it's not very power efficient because in linear mode this does get very, very hot. Uh, it will take in the low voltage that I'm interested in, sort of between three and four volts, and it will put out about what I want to uh, force into the entire pack. Of course, this voltage will be pulled down by the pack and there will be a current flowing uh, DC through that bridge rectifier into my pack and that way I can distribute uh, an excess of charge in one cell to all the cells in the pack. So yeah, I think uh, that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, attempt to attach these two wires to a cell in the pack and attach the DC output to the whole pack and transfer charge and watch what's going on on each of the cells with lots of DVMs. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking it far more than I'm liking this um, desktop surface, this um, carbon fiber. Cheerio.